Well, glory to God in the highest is that time again, and I praise God for this opportunity that God's given us, amen, to share a word of faith with you today. Uh, if this is your first time being a part of the broadcast, my name is Ronald G. Harrison Sr. In the name of our ministry, it's Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, where we're providing knowledge to build a people with a heart after God. So God has given us this platform to use here on um, Facebook to get this message out to you, uh, to encourage you. Uh, we're just excited about what God is doing as we're getting certain remarks from a lot of you guys, giving us a thumbs up. We appreciate that. Even having some uh, comments that you've been dropping in the box there for us. We appreciate that also. But we just thank God for what God is doing in your life as well as my life. And we know that we're trying to learn how to live by faith because it is a learning way. And we thank God for the grace that he has given us to learn if we apply ourselves to that principle. So I want to say hello to all those who are part of Kingdom Faith International Prison Center. I want to say hello to all you guys. I want to say hello to also those two who are uh, on Facebook. On Facebook. Yes, Facebook. All right, Facebook. Amen. I want to say hello to you guys also if this is your first time. Uh, today we'll be doing a message on what did Jesus mean uh, in terms of us bearing fruit. This is part two to that message. Part one is already up on our Facebook page. Uh, so if you get a chance, you want to make sure you uh, check that out. And if you haven't listened to it, it's a good word. Amen. You need to follow up on. So we're doing part two today. What did Jesus mean when he meant that we should bear fruit? Amen. So we're going to go with part two with that. Before we do that, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to, um, at the end of the message, there's some information that you can help help support us in terms of ministry. Uh, that information is there. Uh, thank God for a lot of you have been taking the time to even give to the ministry uh, financially. We appreciate that. And also those who've been praying for the ministry, those two ways you can help us, and we appreciate that. As I said before, uh, we've been doing things that, uh, to uh, cooperate with other ministries in terms of partnering with them. And some of the seed money that you give us, we do support other ministries. Uh, so we just thank God for you being able to be a part of that uh, part of that program with us in terms of doing that. Amen. In Jesus' name. So with that being said, we're going to pray. Uh, what you need to do now is to get your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, we'll make sure you get one. Uh, if you have a hard copy, pull that out. As I said before, if it's on your phone, that's fine. If you don't have a Bible, maybe just need to follow along with us anyway. So I want to encourage you to do that. Don't forget to find a journal, something that you can write down so you can begin to review these messages as well as the scriptures that we, we give you that you can review them a little later at your own um, leisure. Praise God. So let's pray and get right into the word of faith today. All right, Father. We want to honor your presence and thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to share a word of faith with those who are listening today. Uh, you said man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we thank you for this opportunity you've given us to share the word of faith with those who are listening today. We yield ourselves to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take this vessel, clay, use it for your glory as we begin to explore the word of faith today. Give us ears to hear and hearts to obey. And I yield myself to the Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit, do what you do best. And we thank you once again for our time together. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody should say, amen. Amen. All right. Turn your Bibles over to John chapter number 15. This is the gospel of John chapter number 15. This is where we're launched from. We're going to look at verses one through five. And that's where we pose the question, what did Jesus mean when he meant that we should bear what? Fruit. Bear fruit. This is part two to that message. So we're going to John the Gospel of John, chapter number 15. And we're going to read out of the Amplified, uh, no, the King James Version, I'm sorry. There's two versions I'll be reading from, the King James or the Amplified. I'll let you know that. But anyway, uh, we're going to start with the King James Version in John 15, uh, verses 1 through 5. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the wine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he, pr he prunes that it may bear more fruit. And you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So Jesus, amen, as you can see, is using a parable uh, concerning agriculture, concerning 
uh, a vine and branches, and how they're all connected together. So we know that the fruit that Jesus is referring to here in John 15 is not what we call natural fruit, but we call it spiritual fruit. And the spiritual fruit is has a lot to do with behavior traits. You need to keep that in mind because we need to trace this out because he's talking about a relationship with Jesus. And if we're in Jesus, then we're connected to him, which makes us also uh, uh, being uh, uh, in relationship with him. So he's talking about relationship. Remember I said before, it's not so much about religion, but it's about having a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ as him being our personal savior and our personal Lord. So with, again, these spiritual fruits that he's referring to, he's using natural fruit as a parable. And uh, what we're going to look at in terms of what is this spiritual fruit that he's talking about? So uh, these spiritual fruits are what we call behavior traits. Behavior traits allow us to establish good works and it has more to do with our relationship with one another in Christ and to those who are outside of Christ. Now, let me say that again, because the whole purpose of the fruit, fruit has purpose. This spiritual fruit has purpose, just like natural fruit has purpose. This spiritual fruit has purpose. And the purpose of it is that it reflects what we call behavior traits, which allows us to establish what we call the next thing is called good works. And has uh, this is more uh, with us in terms of our relationship with Christ, because we have that relationship with Christ, we should bear these kind of what we call behavior traits that produces what we call good works, which is tied to our relationship being one another in Christ. So these this, this spiritual fruit is now also displayed in terms of how we relate with one another, that those who are in Christ, and also how we relate with those who are outside of Christ. Now, Ephesians chapter number four, we're going to turn there because there's some scripture reference that uh, the apostles actually uh, taught on in terms of how important it is to establish the spiritual fruit uh, that we need to uh, establish that also reflects good works. Okay. Ephesians chapter number four and verse number one through verse number three, Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus, the word church in the Greek is ecclesia, called out ones. He's not talking to a denomination or organization. He is talking to people who have received Jesus because we are now part of the body of Christ. And now Christ is tabernacling in us as individuals and we make up the body of Christ. So here it says here, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the calling wherewith you are called. If you remember this in Ephesians chapter number four, verses one through three. So Paul was talking about, he's, I'm therefore the prison of the Lord beseech you that you should walk worthy of the calling which you were called. Then he says, with all lowliness, gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one another in love, in endowment to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Now he's talking about this whole a walk of unity. The walk of unity began, again, it shows forth. And Paul was talking about the walk of unity has to talk about our relationship in Christ. Our relationship with Christ requires us to walk by faith. And the faith is having intellectual knowledge out of God's word. Because faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more we understand that the word is given for instructions that will test our obedience and surrendering to do things his way, as we do so, we're now betrayed the now we'll begin to tap in and allow the, the behavior traits that God said that we need to operate in that now connects us to one another and also to help those who are outside of Christ. Now, he's talking about here that we should walk worthy of the calling. So there's a calling that God has given us as all believers who are saved. This is not a calling into ministry, into pulpit ministry. This is not a calling in terms of spiritual gifts, in terms of of the fivefold ministry, but he is talking about the calling in terms of our relationship that we've been all called to in Christ that now reflects something what we call Christ likeness. Or Christ likeness, it points to what? Spiritual behavior, spiritual behavior begins to produce what we call the good works. And the good works is something that now ties us to one another as those who are in Christ, it also ties us to those who are outside of Christ. How we know that? Because he says here in the scripture, he says, with all lowliness, 
And he's talking about the fruits of the spirit again, the own lowliness. And then he says gentleness, long suffering. Then he says bearing one another in love. So remember, it's connecting not only us to Christ, through Christ, the fruit that comes through Christ to us connects us to one another and to those who are outside of Christ. These are called behavior traits. Amen. Behavior traits. Now, what we need to understand that producing fruit points to establishing what we call good works. And good works are behavior traits. As again, I'm going to keep saying that because I want you to get that because we don't uh, correlate the spiritual fruit of something being practical. We think it's something spiritual and not something that's non existing, something that's not, cannot be attained. But here we are understanding it can be attained because this is a description of what these spiritual fruits are and their character traits, as we know, because it talks about with all lowliness, it says gentleness and long suffering and bearing one another in love. This is not talking about when we get to heaven. It's talking about our walk now in our relationship with Christ now in the earth with one another. These things have to be established. In other words, established means they have to be a training and also submission to that training to allow us to walk by what instructions that allow us to carry out these types of behaviors. Now, bearing fruit reflects growth, okay? The bearing fruit that John that Jesus talks about in John 15, it talks about bearing, bearing fruit reflects growth. So Jesus is talking about us growing in him and the growth in him reflects us growing and changing our behavior. So growth reflects spiritual growth, all right? So the growing respect growth res reflects spiritual growth and spiritual growth is all about walking in the light. Remember, we're talking about uh, walking in the light, walking in the light of God's word is us actually walking in step with God. Amen. So walking, remember, walking in the light of God's word. Remember, all this is about growth. In John 15, this is not about us. Uh, uh, remember the spiritual uh, warning I gave in the first lesson I gave in this the whole motivation behind this, the spiritual growth is not about being perfect or sinless. That's not what Jesus is talking about. However, it is talking about us becoming what we call mature, to begin becoming mature in Christ. And maturity points to having uh, our character educated, the, our will educated to his will. It's that sort of form of submission and obedience out of a love relationship is why we do that not to find acceptance from God because we are accepted in God through Jesus Christ. And that's Romans 5, 1. If you ever look at Romans 5, 1 and 2, it talks about that we've been justified by faith. Therefore, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So we know we've already been accepted of him. So this type of action that we take now is not because we're trying to be uh, get on God's good side or begin ex to be accepted of God. We already accepted with God. Now we just begin to operate in terms of maturity because that's the next thing that's, that God puts on the calling that we have. When Paul talks about uh, the walk worthy of your calling, he's talking about coming to a place of maturity in the understanding of who you have received. So we're moving what we call from positional truth to experimental truth. You got to experience Christ in terms of submitting your will to his will and the will of God is the word of God. So when we begin to understand this, we understand that we're under grace to grow. Remember, grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But this knowledge has a lot to us understanding how, amen, important for us, the spiritual fruit that we're talking about is behavior traits. The behavior straight traits allows us to establish what we call good works. The good works is a reflection of those behavior traits. And those behavior traits is, is that we found out is the fruits of the spirit, fruit of the spirit. Uh, uh, it talks about love. We talked about that in Galatians. It talks about nine fruits of the of the spirit. And the fruits of the spirit is what connects us to one another and also connects us to those who are outside of Christ. I can't say that enough because that's putting in the right context about what this purpose of, of why we need to operate into a place of maturity. Now, in Ephesians chapter number four, if you look at Ephesians four and verse number 11 through 13, Paul speaks of it again as we go a little bit further in Ephesians four, but in Ephesians four, 11 through 13, and I'm gonna read this out of the Amplified Version so we can, uh, so we can get a full understanding, I think kind of gives us more um, 
verbiage in terms of getting a better understanding. This is what it says here in Ephesians 4 and verses uh, 11 through 13. It says, he gave gifts, he himself appointed and gave to men, some apostles, special messengers, some prophets, inspired preachers and expounders, some evangelists and preachers of the gospel, traveling missionaries, some pastors and shepherds of his flock and teachers. Then he says here, his intent, this is all purpose of the fivefold ministry, his intent was for the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints. Now notice it says, it says here, it says that the perfecting and the equipping, the perfecting and equipping has a lot to do with spiritual maturity. And the spiritual maturity is tied to what we said before, has a lot to do with us understanding that we need to operate in what we, good works. But you can't operate in good works until you understand, amen, the fruits of the spirit that are needed for you to operate in good works is now those are behavior traits that we talked about. And we're trying to allow us to see that they are obtainable by us yielding and understanding how to follow instructions. This is the part of what we know, learn things to do and things not to do, which is a choice, choice and education of our will and developing our character so we can arrive in a place called maturity. Now, this is what it says here. His intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints, his consecrated people, that they should do the works of the ministry for building up Christ's body, the church. Now, 13 verses are key verse that I might develop until we all attain oneness in faith and the comprehension, it says here, of the full, accurate knowledge of the Son of God. That refers to the renewing of the mind. All that right there says here, comprehension of the full accuracy. Mm -hmm. It says knowledge of the Son of God, that we might arrive, listen, that we might arrive, not, not arrive in being accepted of God, but arrive in terms of a renewing our mind that we understand the importance of why we need to have good behavior, I mean, good works. Good works are tied to with behavior traits. The behavior traits are the spiritual, the spiritual fruit that we need to be operating in to one another and also to others outside of the body of Christ. He says here, he says here, a comprehension, comprehension of the full accuracy, knowledge of the Son of God, that we might arrive at a really mature manhood. Come on. Mature man, completeness, the personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection, measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ uh, and, to, and the completeness found in him. Now, it talks about us growing up into Christ. The growing up in Christ points to maturity. Maturity points to what? Education, educating our will. And then that's our character. Our character is being educated. That points to all to the renewing of the mind and the renewing of the mind. Amen. It's all about us understanding how to walk from out of our position in Christ to us experiencing Christ and all of us experiencing Christ. There we begin to show forth the fruits of Christ that are for one another in the body of Christ and those who are outside the body of Christ. Now, notice it says here maturity points to what? Christ likeness. Christ likeness points to behavior traits. And these behavior traits are produced by denying one's self or one's denying your will personal will our own we don't have a will to do we can will to do things our will we will to do things god's will okay i'll pause there for a minute because i want to make sure i got that right so let me repeat that maturity points to christ likeness so he's saying here Remember what Paul said over in Galatians chapter, I mean, not Galatians, I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter number three. He said, uh, let me get there real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter number three, and he's talking to a born some believers there. Let's go there real quick. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number three, verse number one. Come on, come on, let's go there. Let's go there, Galatians. 1 Corinthians, I got to get there myself. I'm telling you, 1 Corinthians chapter number three and verse number one, I believe it is. 1 Corinthians 3 and 1. This one says, as, and, and I, uh, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. Now, this one says in Amphi, however, brethren, I could not talk to you as spiritual men, but as non-spiritual men of the flesh in whom the carnal nature predominates as to mere infants in the new life and in Christ and able to talk 
yet. What is Paul talking about? He's saying, listen, I'm talking to you. I know you're saved in your position in Christ. I'm not talking about your position in Christ. I'm talking about your maturity in Christ. I'm not, listen, I'm not talking about your position in Christ. I know you're saved in Christ and you've been forgiven, but now you need to move from that place of the position to experiencing Christ in, the, in developing a spiritual relationship with him that reflects what we call good works. Good works are behavior traits. The behavior traits are the spiritual fruits. So he's saying here, I don't see spiritual fruit in you in terms of your development, in terms of your understanding from your position in Christ and experiencing one another in terms of relating with one another. Why he says that, if you look at the second verse, I fed you with milk and not with, with solid food, for until now you are not able to receive it. Even now you're still not able. And he said, for you are still carnal. Now, he didn't say they weren't saved. He said, your mind ain't been renewed. You're, you're in Christ, but you're still thinking fleshly. You're still thinking about me, myself, and I instead of the, the, the Holy Trinity, which is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He said, for where there you are, there is what? Envy? Listen, he's talking about behavior traits that said that lets me know. He didn't say they weren't saved. He just said you're still operating carnally. How do I know that? Because you're operating in envy. You're operating in strife. You're operating in division among you. Are you not carnal and behave like men? So what is he talking about? The same thing we're talking about here, amen, in reference to how important. And when Jesus said that we need to bear fruit, what is that fruit? We know that fruit is what? Spiritual fruit. The spiritual fruit has to deal with what? This talks about uh, the fruits of the spirit. We know the fruits of the spirit, amen, refers to what behavior traits or behavior traits are what we call good works. The good works relate to what one another that are in Christ and also those who are outside of Christ. He's talking about arriving to a place of maturity. You're saved, but you got to move from being saved from that position of truth to an experiencing what Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we can't do that unless your mind has been renewed. So that's what he's talking about here. So the importance of Romans 12 and 2, uh, turn to Romans chapter number, uh, no, go to uh, Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 10 as we walk this out some more. This is a good word today because a lot of people don't understand the process for change. The process for change from, from, from moving from our position of being in Christ because this is not something that we do in terms of receive acceptance of Christ. This shows that our love relationship with Christ, our love relationship with Christ, we, we willfully surrender to do things His will out of a love relationship and this brings us to a place of what we call renewing in the mind, maturity, and the maturity is all about educating our will to yield to instructions that tells us that certain behaviors we don't allow ourselves to operate in because we willfully surrender to Christ because out of our love relationship to develop Christ's likeness inside of us so it can begin to connect to one another and those who are outside of Christ. If you look at Ephesians chapter, uh, what, number two and 10, and let's look over to Ephesians chapter number two, verse number 10. Amen. And it says here in Ephesians 2 and 10, and it says, for we are his workmanship. Come on, created in Christ Jesus for good works. This is talking about establishing something in us. Remember, you are the vine, I'm the branches. Because you're in me and I'm in you and we're one, I'm going to produce something. I need to produce something in you and out of you. And that's what this is talking about. But we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amplified means a little bit different. It says, for we are God's own handiwork, God's workmanship, recreated in Christ, born anew. Come on. That's our, we've been moved from that. He's going to move us from being in positional, uh, positional truth that we've been saved, we've been born again. Then he said that we may, that we may do what? Good works. Come on now. Do good works which God predestined and planned beforehand for us taking paths which he had prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them. Come on now, that we should walk in them and living the good life which he had prearranged and ready for us to live. Did you hear what that said? It's talking about the process for, from, from, from being in positional truth to experimental truth. And experimental truth is about growth. And the growth, amen, is talking about us what? A spiritual growth, what? Bearing fruit reflects what? Growth. Growth reflects spiritual growth. Spiritual growth is all about walking in the light. And it says here, it says, for we are God's workmanship, his own workmanship, 
excuse me, we are God's own handiwork, I'm sorry, his own workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, come on, that you didn't, if there's no period there, then it says born anew, that we should do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us taking past, which he prearranged ahead of time, come on that, amen, that we should walk in them, that we should walk in them. We have a choice. We don't have to walk in them, that we... We should walk in them, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Now, if you turn to Romans chapter number uh, f uh, 12 and verse number two, I know I'm going a little fast here today, but just need to stick, stick with me. And I'm, that's why I'm glad that we, re we record these so you can get this message or it is recorded to you. And you can go back and get it and look at it again and go over it again because you need to get this in your spirit because this is our marching orders in terms of fulfilling walking worthy of the calling which he has called us. And the distinction is, as you remember, we're not doing this so we can be be accepted of Christ. We've already been accepted, right? We've already been saved, born anew, but we've been born anew with purpose to walk out something. And what we need to walk out is that bearing that fruit. And bearing that fruit has a lot to do with uh, 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 behavior traits that are found, amen, in terms of the word of God that tells us that these are the baby behavior traits that I want you now to take on. So that means you have to renew your mind and submit your will to his will in order for that to be done. Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says here in the King James Version, I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, listen, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He said, this is what out of related out of a love relationship, it should put you to a place of obedience. This is a place of obedience and surrendering, a willful surrender. God, this is not legalism. It's not something that we do in order to get approved. It's something we do because we have been approved. And this is what we want to do because we love him. Therefore, we want to do things his way. And it says that do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing in mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and what is the perfect will of God. Now, I like this because the renewing of the mind is about changing one's, one's will. Remember, we have a will. We have a will. God created us to have a will. Man became a living soul. We have a will. In that, we have a rational, intellectual uh, uh, me means of thinking and rational thinking, but also we have the, we have the ability to choose. Amen. And the choose is, is the, the important part because you remember, renew, renewing the mind is the changing of one's will or wills, or what? Changing one's will, one's way of doing things is submitting one's will to the will of God. Remember, the will of God is the word of God. Anytime you want to know what God's will is, it's in his word, okay? So really, this is all about following instructions, amen? So to, to get to the place of bearing fruit, you can't bear fruit until you follow the instructions of how to bear that fruit. Come on now, because Jesus said, listen here, you, without me, you can do nothing. So he's going to give us, amen, through the teachings of his apostles, as well as Jesus himself, things that we should do and things not to do that will test our love relationship with him out of obedience and surrendering to his will. <clears throat> My God. Amen. So it's not out of, we get to, we get to obey God. He doesn't make us obey him. We get to obey him because of the love that he has already showed through us, through us being saved, being born again through him being our righteousness. He's done all that for us. But now this is our part to show that we love him. Now notice it says over in Titus, amen, chapter number two. And we're about ready to wrap this up here for this week. And we'll pick this up again, maybe if God says so. Uh, Titus, we want to go to Titus chapter number two, verses 11 through 14. Chapter two, 11 through 14. And when you'll find out in Titus, you're going to find out in the scripture, as we begin to read this, we talk about trained by the saving grace. In other words, the grace of God is on us after we receive Jesus Christ. The grace for us is to grow. The grow, the growing has a lot to do with John 15, amen, one through five that we just read, because Jesus wants to bear us spiritual fruit that we need to bear that comes through him. Glory to God. Now notice what it says here. It says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. This is, again, Titus 2 and 11. Teaching us, let me stop there. 
The grace of God has appeared, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Then it says, teaching us. So the word of God is supposed to teach us how to move from the carnal mindset to a spiritual mindset. And that's through him giving us instructions out of the word. Teaching us that, what is it going to teach us? Denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. We should live soberly and righteous and in godly and in the presence of this age. Then it says, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our, our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that we might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own people, his own special people, zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort, rebuke, and all authority, let no one despise you. So he's telling us, if you look at the verse here, that we once we get saved and receive salvation, we move from that position of truth now to an experimental truth that has to deal with teaching. And teaching is designed to, to test your will, test your will, whether it will submit to God's will. And that's the point of question is, how well do you follow instructions? So biblical instructions are designed to bring us into biblical truth. Biblical truth is designed also to change how we think and how we operate because we're now moving from a carnal mindset to a spiritual mindset, amen, in terms of how we operate not only with God, but also how we operate with one another and those who are outside of the body of Christ. Now, as you begin to look at it, it says the whole teaching is going to teach us, amen, what denying, what the denying of ourself is the key, key, key element to the whole piece, all right? So the problem is, is that, that a lot of people don't produce this type of fruit. The problem is, is that we don't understand the word of God is designed to train us. However, we must choose to submit to, to the training. If you don't choose to change how you think and change how you act, then you're going to remain the same because God will not allow himself to override what you will. What you will is what you will. But if you will his will, his will will work for you. But if you choose not to, then you run into other issues. So mission, submission sometimes is the problem in our part for growing and establishing the spiritual fruit or moving from carnality to spirituality. It's just because we are saved, which you already know, because you're saved and born again. As Paul said, you're saved, born again in 1 Corinthians chapter number three, but you still haven't went through the process of renewing your mind. Therefore, you're still carnal. And therefore, the carnal behavior still comes out of you, which is envy, strife, and division. Therefore, you have not learned Christ yet. Glory to God. You didn't say you weren't saved. You haven't pushed in from this point, from moving from positional truth to now experiencing the power of God in you that brings about change. Now, the goal for spiritual growth is all about living a blessed life by keeping us in step in receiving intellectual knowledge of God's word. And not only that, but keeping in step with that. You know how you walk the step as you're marching with someone, someone's marching in front of you, you know, you step, they step, you know, just work marching in order. But really, spiritual growth is all about us living a blessed life by keeping in step in receiving in receiving intellectual knowledge of God's word, which can empower us to produce behaviors that reflects that we are children of the king. The last verse I'm going to read is John, uh, Matthew 5 and 16, and we'll stop there. I may have went over my time a little bit. I'm hoping that I did, but if I did, just forgive me, but I think I'm almost where I need to be because my pace is where it right need to be. That's why some of you say you need to slow down. No, you need to go back and listen to it again so you make sure you get it. Amen. Because I'm on the time restraint here, but I'm I'm making sure that you understand what we're talking about and give you scriptural reference so you can run back to it and understand it. Because Jesus said, my people, not Jesus, but the word of God tells us that people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And that lack of knowledge is not having a full understanding, uh, uh, accuracy in terms of what is re required for us as believers Let's go to Matthew chapter number, um, uh, yeah, Matthew chapter number five and 16. And you'll see as this all, we tie this all together, it's going to really uh, bring uh, some uh, a greater understanding when we read this verse here. And this, that one verse is uh, Matthew five and 16, uh, when Jesus is given uh, a sermon on the mount. But then it says here, it says in five and 16, it says, let your light so shine 
before men that they may see your good works. Come on here now. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That they may see your good works. What are you talking about? See your good works. Remember we talked about that? Remember we talked, what are you talking about? See your good works. That they may see what? Spiritual fruit. They see the spiritual fruit. What? What is that spiritual fruit? It is behavior traits. They'll see your behavior. Your behavior reflects that you're children of the king. And when you do that, the whole purpose of that is so God can get glory. God can get glory because people can see the Christ in you and not just see you. But they see the Christ in you and working through you. <laughs> glory to God. This is a good word. Because you know what? Again, this is all about we don't want to abuse the grace of God upon us to grow. Grace to grow. God's grace is upon. We're in the decimization of grace through the Lord Jesus Christ. And this period for us has purpose tied to us. And one of the main purposes, and one of the main things that we need to make sure that we're reflecting who we are in Christ. Because if any man be in Christ, the Bible says he's a new creature and old things are passed away. And all things become new. So when he says old things are passed away, it's a process for that. It's a process for change. And that change is the renewing of the mind, understanding, amen, that spiritual fruit is all about having behavior traits. And those behavior traits are called what? They're called what? Fruits of the Spirit. What we got? And the fruits of the Spirit are established in us as we develop and grow maturely because we're now not doing our will, but we're doing his will. And as we begin to develop that, it is it's designed to help us in relationship with one another and those who are outside of Christ. My name is Ronald G. Harrison Sr., and I approve this message today. I hope you've been blessed and encouraged by it. You need to listen to this because God may be trying to let you know he's trying to prune your tree so he can get some more. Prune you so you can prune not the true tree, but prune the branches so he can get some more fruit out of you, which are called spiritual fruit. So I'm praying that you've been blessed by the word of faith. Listen. If this word has blessed you in some kind of way and I'm encouraging you, listen, I need your support. I need you to help us. There's two ways you can help us. And the first way is you can pray for us. Pray for us as a ministry. But the other way you can help us, amen, is to drop a seed so we can continue to get this word of faith out. Glory God. I'll tell you, this is a blessed word and people being encouraged. Lives are being changed. Amen. Somebody had listened to the message who had, who had walked away from God and somehow or another they had got hold of our Facebook page and hold uh, a part of this message and they sent a message to me and let me know that they're going to get back connected to God because they, they have gotten a greater understanding than what they had before. And that's what it's all about. And Jesus said, you should. And when you walk in the light, as he is in the light, well, that light is what illumination from his word, amen, being rightly divided, given to you so you know how to grow in the things that God is saying that we need to grow in. So again, I want to thank you guys that will take the time. Go to our website, www.kficc.com. That is a secure site. There is a cash app, amen, handle there for you also. And if you just want to get me to, to directly, there's no pressure here, none whatsoever. God will bless you because this ministry is blessed because why? We're advancing the kingdom of God by getting the word of the king out to those who need it that are citizens of the kingdom. So again, be blessed and highly favored. Thank God for you guys for taking time to do that. At the end of the year, you will receive, amen, a statement from us to let us know what you've given. Praise God. And again, we thank you so much for being a part of Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, this media platform that God's given us to get a word out to those who need to hear it. Glory to God. So let's pray and let's bless you and we're going to let you go. And hopefully we'll see you again next week. Father, we thank you so much for our time together. Pray that you bless those who have been blessed by the word of faith today. Encourage and strengthen them. Do what you do best in their lives, God. And help us to grow. Help us to grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to put on the right behavior traits so we can reflect that we're children of the King. This we pray. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Glory to God. God bless you.